Hey, good evening. That was the, uh, the bell. It's time for us to begin our evening worship services. First, I want to just take this time to uh, welcome those of you who are in the audience and may be visiting with us. We're so delighted that you have uh, chosen to worship with us this evening. And also want to welcome those who are uh, viewing via live stream. We want to welcome you as well. Just want to highlight some of the announcements that I went over uh, uh, this morning. Obviously, uh, Mike is re recovered somewhat, and he's here, so we're thankful, grateful for that. Um, the Gladys is still under the weather, and and Willa Cap is still under the weather, so uh, pray for them. Um, we got a word from Ruby that her brother Lorenzo is uh, back in the hospital, uh, so pray for pray for him and the doctors who will be watching uh, over him. Again, I just want to thank everyone that came out for the last of leaders uh, event on this uh, past Friday night. I'm thankful for, for uh, Jeremiah and, and James and uh, Devin and all of those who are participating and everyone else who contributed uh, to that event. There's a sheet on the, in the back for you on the board for last of leaders. Again, uh, you know, bi-weekly we have the meeting on the Friday nights and we usually have uh, need uh, brethren to uh, lead the Devo session, section of it, as well as uh, people to uh, volunteer to provide food um, for that event. The teacher sign-up sheet for the winter quarter was on the bulletin in the foyer. I think as of this morning, I was still looking for a slot for the middle school and primary on Sundays and backups um, for all of the, the classes. And along that line, the education committee will meet on the 3rd of December and lunch will be uh, uh, provided. See uh, James for additional information on that. Remember the progressive dinner is uh, coming up. It'll be held on Friday, December the 1st, starting at uh, six o'clock. There's uh, all the information is on the uh, bulletin board in the, in the hallway. Also, we're collecting again for the uh, Southeastern uh, Christmas uh, Families Project. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have signed up already. This sheet is actually full, but that will be adding an additional sheet if there are others that still want to uh, participate uh, in that. Remember, uh, stand by if we're going to make an announcement for uh, Betty's going to uh, be needing help for just to move the heavy furniture, but also she needs help that you can just talk with her now and coordinating about just packing up some of the some of the smaller stuff. So uh, stand by, we'll be 
You'll be, she'll be getting an announcement sooner, uh, soon just to let you know when that date is, uh, date is scheduled. Uh, please have your input for the uh, budget um, by, to the elders by the 13th of uh, December. And also the ladies' Bible class, you know, it'll be starting back in January, but the books are in. So if you were not here this morning and didn't have an opportunity to, you sign up for a book and you didn't have an opportunity to receive one, you'll see Veronica afterwards and that uh, she'll make sure that, uh, that you get a copy of that so you can begin preparing for those classes. Several of our members will be traveling or are, are traveling. I remember to keep them in, in prayers. Um, got news that Valve had returned back from her for her trip safely, so thank grateful for that. I had two cards that I read this morning. I'll read them again. First one said, to Chesapeake Church of Christ, thank you so much for your prayers and words of comfort, for your cards, flowers, gifts, and all your calls, it really helped me to recover. It feels wonderful to belong to this body. Thanks again. Love you. It's from Cynthia uh, Benjamin. The second card said, Dear Church family, thank you so very much for your cards, gifts, text messages, calls, desserts, foods, and flowers. Your generosity and prayers, cares, concerns, and love have not only warmed my heart, but sped up the healing and recovery process. I'm totally undeserving of such a wonderful church family. May God bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And that's from, uh, from Veronica. If you have uh, an electronic devices, now would be a good time to uh, put them on silent or turn them off so they won't uh, interfere uh, with the worship services. I believe that's all the announcement I have this time. It's this time we will pause for our opening prayer. Let us bow. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your most holy, wonderful, precious, righteous, and divine name. Father, we are so grateful and thankful that we can come to you as our God at the close of another beautiful Lord's Day. We thank you, Father, for the privilege and the honor to be in your presence, knowing how you love from, to hear from us, knowing that we have an avenue to reach you through prayer, knowing, Father, that you can do all things, knowing, Father, that you love us and you loved us before we ever loved you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the provisions that you've given us. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our extended church family. Father, please help us to cleanse our mind this night, rid it of all the distractions that would hinder us from giving you our all. We pray, Father, that at the end of the day, what we've offered you has been a sweet savor. Father, we need each other, we need you, and Father, without you, we could do nothing. We pray now that you will humble us and cleanse our minds so that we can give you the best that we have in this worship service. Be with us, help us to die to self in all that we do. Help us to live our daily lives as we decrease while you increase in our lives. Help us, Father, that the world might know through us that there's one God and that there's no other but you. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for this moment. We pray for those on our sick list. We pray for those who are on their way and who could not be here or who may have decided not to be here. Father, help us in all things that we do to realize that you are the one true and perfect God. Thank you so much for your mercy, your kindness, and love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Good evening. Our first hymn for the night will be Yield Night to Temptation. We'll be singing the first and the third stanza. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some others to win. Fight man fully on would all passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. Act the Savior to help you. Yes, comfort, strength, can keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you To him that a comet God give it a crown. So faith we shall conquer, though often cast down. He is our Savior, our strength will renew, you just look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through, you just ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strength, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Our next one will be 380. Oh, I love Jesus. First and second stanza. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my head, the sweetest name on earth. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus, oh. Jesus, oh, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, so how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Us because he first loved me. The song just before communion will be 283, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. We will sing all verses there. 
Jesus, keep me never cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing stream. From Calvary's mountain In the cross In the cross Be my glory So shall find rest beyond the river near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy Shed it's me around me in the cross in the cross be my glory. shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God reigns it seems for me help me walk from day to day with a shadow of me in the cross This time in our service is set aside for communion, where we Christians partake of the bread, which represents our Savior's body, and the fruit of the vine, which represents his shed blood, with the purpose of remembering him until he returns, and also to reflect on all that he has done for us. Is there anyone who needs a communion kit?
we can find the authority and the frequency for the Lord's Supper in Acts chapter 20 at verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message unto midnight. And we can also find in the word where Paul instructs the Corinthians on the matter of the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And we had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let, e let each a man examine, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us have a prayer for the, for the bread. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings on this, the elements here, the bread that represents your son's better body. And we remember what he did for our benefit, and, we, and it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, we ask your blessings on the fruit of the vine, this fruit that represents your son's bloodshed, which, which he did for the remission of our sins. And Father, we just thank you for his sacrifice, and it is his name that we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper, and we're also commanded to give. And we, again, we can go to the Word to find the authority and the frequency concerning the collections of the saint at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, starting at verse 1. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may purpose in that there be no collections when I come. And we can also find an example of the manner in which we should give in 2 Corinthians, starting at chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, who, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. If you like to give, there is a basket in the foyer, and you can also mail your check to the church, or you can give online on the church's website. Let us pray for our giving. Father, we just thank you for the ability to be able to return to you, which has come from you. And everything that we see, Father, belongs to you. Father, we thank you for the grace of giving us our jobs and making a way to take care of our families and, and being able to support the, this, this church body. We pray, Father, that this money will be used to at the upkeeping of this building and to further spread your word in our community and around the world. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
for those who are using the hymn book, would you please mark 679B, God is so good for your invitation. And would you also, those who can stand for the next hymn, Glory to His Name, we will sing the first and third stanza. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down was for cleansing from sins I cried. There to my heart was the blood of singing glory to I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of life, singing glory to Fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have been turning. There Jesus saved me and keep me singing glory to His name I'm singing glory to His name. Precious name singing glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life singing. Glory to his This evening's scripture reading will be coming from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 20 through 25. Again, that is Mark, chapter 11, verses 20 through 25. And it reads, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe them, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Good evening. Someone has said uh, that forgiveness is a beautiful act, uh, much too beautiful for ugly people. Uh, forgiveness, uh, it's a, a big thing 
uh, much too big for little people. Uh, it said that forgiveness, it is the scent. It's the fragrance that flowers give off when they are trampled upon. Never does the human soul appear uh, as strong. Never does the human soul appear uh, as godlike as it does when it foregoes revenge and dares, dares to forgive an injury. And so as we go forward tonight, I want you to carve this resolution in your hearts that I will forgive those who have wronged me and I will seek to reconcile with those that I have wronged. I want you to carve that resolution in your heart. I will, I will, I will forgive those who have wronged me and I will, I will, I will seek to reconcile with those that I have wronged. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 14, the word of God admonishes us to strive for peace with everyone to pursue peace with all men and for the holiness without which no one can see the Lord. Verse 15 says, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. The verse is uh, stressing the importance of us living at peace or striving to live at peace with everyone, and it warns about that bitter root that can spring up causing trouble. And so as we think about the first part of our resolution, that I will forgive those who have uh, wronged me, it is calling us to embrace forgiveness. And to be sure, there's no root of bitterness that is lodged in our hearts against anyone for any reason. And so as we go forward, I want you to think about this question. Ask yourself, is there anyone in my past, is there, is there anyone that has wronged me that I have not forgiven. I have not fully forgiven anyone. And as you think about that question, I want you to look back at Mark chapter 11. And I want you to pay attention to what Jesus says there in that context when he's teaching his disciples how to pray mountain moving, powerful prayers. In Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse number 22, the Bible says, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. My Bible says it will be done for him. Therefore. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And here's the punchline I want us to think about for this lesson. Verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses did you see that Jesus says when you stand praying I want you to forgive and what's the condition the condition of that forgiveness is if you have anything against anyone 
The Lord says, I want you to forgive. I want you to be willing to forgive. Now, at this junction in the study, I think it is important for us to think about the distinction between forgiveness and reconciliation. The two terms are closely related. They're often linked in scripture, but there is a distinction. We think about the Greek word that's translated uh, forgive there. It literally means to send away, literally means to release, literally means to let go. And so when we're talking about forgiveness, in a sense, it is a personal act. It's a personal act of releasing Releasing the resentment and releasing the anger towards another because of whatever, an offense, a, a wrongdoing, a mistake, or some flaw. It's releasing that anger and resentment and offering grace. Offering grace. Uh, and that can be done, I want you to understand, that can be done without reconciliation. When we talk about reconciliation, we're talking about fixing a broken relationship. We're talking about two parties being separated. That involves fixing that broken relationship, and that requires a willingness and action from both parties. Do you understand that? If there's going to be reconciliation, there's only so much that I can do. So reconciliation takes willingness and action from both parties. But oftentimes it is the case that forgiveness is the first step in the reconciliation process. Forgiveness, letting go, releasing the anger and the resentment because of a mistake, because of a wrong because of a flaw and offering grace. Very important for many of us to think about. Because many of us, we have this mentality that when individuals wrong us, we throw them in this debtor's prison in our hearts. We have this mentality that because you wronged me, I have the right, I'm going to be angry until you pay for it. But Jesus says, if you have anything against anyone, Jesus says, I want you to let it go. I want you to release it, the resentment. I don't want any bitterness in you at all. You see, this is very important for us to think about because, you see, uh, we need to understand that when others wrong us and when they hurt us, we don't have to let our anger kind of stay in this holding pattern. We don't need to have anger and a resentment that stays in this holding pattern in our minds until these individuals either repent or until they pay for what they've done. Come to understand that there's some folks who have hurt you. There's some folks who have hurt me. They may or may not understand the error of their ways and they may never come to understand it. They may never. There's some individuals right now, the person that hurt you, they're dead and gone. And so if you're waiting for an apology from them, if you're waiting for them to repent, guess what? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. And I'm saying that to you not to be insensitive, but to understand this. I certainly believe that God does not want you to be burdened down with frustration and anger and resentment because of their past sins and failures. I'm saying to you that God in his word wants us to be ready and willing. He wants us to release it, to forgive them and let God deal with them in his own way, in his own time. Now, I'm sure someone says, man, it just seems wrong. It seems unfair to forgive someone or to even be willing to forgive someone who doesn't deserve it. Uh, it seems wrong. It seems unfair to be willing to forgive someone who hasn't even asked. 
They haven't even asked for my forgiveness. And you might think that seems wrong and unfair, but I want to suggest to you that there are many reasons uh, why you should be certainly willing and ready to forgive, certainly eager to release the resentment, the anger, and the frustration that perhaps you have towards one who has hurt you. One reason I'll tell you is this, that forgiveness is one thing we can't receive unless, guess what? We are willing to give it. If you think like me, that's all the motivation I need. Colossians chapter 3. One of the reasons we need to be ready and willing always to forgive, to release it, because forgiveness is one thing we cannot receive unless we are willing to give it. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 12 uh, the Bible says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. The Bi patience, the Bible says, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, what should we do? Forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. But understand what Jesus says when he's teaching about the or giving the model prayer in Matthew 6 and verses 14 and 15. Jesus says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, guess what God will do? Your heavenly father will forgive you. But guess what? If you take it upon yourself, if you so choose to say, I'm not going to forgive others their trespasses. If you want to live that way, understand something. God says, I'm not going to forgive you either. And sometimes when we're holding these grudges, sometimes when we're holding on to the anger and the resentment, I think Christians forget that fact. I'm telling you, I'm telling myself, if you understand that, that's great motivation. Great motivation. To be willing and ready to forgive anyone for anything. You think about Jesus in Luke chapter 23 and verse number 34. We think about this idea of being willing to extend, uh, being willing to unconditionally uh, forgive, uh, being willing to, uh, to be unconditionally willing to forgive. Let me say that right. Unconditionally willing to forgive. Uh, we can see that when Jesus was crucified in Luke chapter 23 and verse number 34. Remember when Jesus was on that cross? And do you remember what he prayed there on that cross when he was hanging there? Do you remember what he said? What did he say to those individuals or about those individuals who were spitting on him and mocking him and showing that they lacked faith in him? who were persecuting him and all of those things. What did he say to the father on their behalf? He says, Father, forgive them. Why? Because they know not what they do. I'm not saying to you they were reconciled with God. I'm saying that it does exemplify that there was a willingness to forgive before these individuals repented, before they ever asked for forgiveness. He's going to the father saying, forgive them. He's desiring it. He's willing for them to have it. They don't know what they're doing. There's a willingness to forgive, a willingness. Stay with me. I don't want you to miss that. To forgive even in the absence of repentance or a request for forgiveness. We look at Matthew 18, 21 through 22. You remember when Peter asked the Lord, how many times should someone forgive or someone sin against me and I forgive him? Uh, Peter said, seven times, Lord. The Lord said, bless your heart, Peter. <laughs> Not seven times, but 70 times seven. The Lord is saying, I want you to have a heart that is willing to forgive continually over and over and over and over and over again. Now, we're going to nuance this in coming lessons for the application of that. But that's the heart 
that I'm willing, I'm ready to release the resentment, to release the anger. I'm willing and I'm ready to do all that I can to bring about reconciliation. You see, I say this to you all the time, all the time. You think about strong relationships, any of them that have stood the test of time. Those things don't happen because those individuals don't hurt one another. It happens all the time. So those those relationships last. They are strong because those individuals who have hurt, they have been hurt in that relationship. They have chosen to forgive and to keep forgiving. Keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. Understand, this is for me to understand, certainly for me, my heart. Understand that if you're going to have strong elder and preacher relationship, if you're going to have a strong relationship between the elders and the deacons, if you're going to have a strong relationship between husband and wife, a strong relationship between brother and sister, that doesn't happen just because no one ever hurts the other one. Think about anyone you love, your kids, your spouse, your mama, your daddy. They hurt you sometimes. You hurt them sometimes. But the relationship grows and it survives because you forgive and you keep going. You keep going. It's impossible 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 to go through this life without being hurt by someone sometime as jesus says in luke chapter 17 and verse number one he said temptations and offenses and stumbling blocks they, they are inevitable they are going to happen it's, you can bank on it but god in his mercy uh, he has created, he has set up this amazing thing called forgiveness. And I want to suggest to you that it is the escape route for getting out of our own prisons of bitterness, our own prisons of bitterness, to restore broken relationships with others. And so, yeah, we don't forgive just seven times, up to seven times. We forgive up to 70 times Seven. I want you to go to Luke 17. Uh, I try to think of objections in my mind as I think through a sermon of what someone might say to push back at me. And I imagine someone in the audience is thinking about Luke 17, three and four. You know, sometimes I think we try to make this verse say what it doesn't say. We try to make it say some things and apply it to some ways and justify some thinking that this verse doesn't give us room to do. We'll read it and then we'll think about it together. Luke chapter 17, uh, verses 3 and 4. The English Standard Version says, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Now, oftentimes I hear folks say this verse, the Bible says, if they repent, uh, I must forgive. But if they don't repent, I don't have to forgive. That's what they say. Now, I'm going to get to that, but I'm going to address some things in this verse that we often miss before we get to that. Now, Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, what should you do? You rebuke him. You censure him. You have a talk with him. And oftentimes, many of us are bitter because we don't even do that. Someone has wronged us and we don't even give them the opportunity to repent because we won't tell them. We'll have the heart, we'll have, we'll have the wrong, we'll have the mistake or whatever they did in our hearts 
festering and brewing and festering and brewing. We'll talk to everyone about it, to go on Facebook about it, but we'll never go to that person, letting them know what they did to hurt us, to even give them the chance to repent. With bitter, 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 angry, 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 and sometimes that person can come to you and say, is everything all right? It's all right. <laughs> I'm fine. And you know you're not. I know I'm not. We look at the verse. We say, well, yeah, he says, if they, if they repent, uh, I can't forgive them. And so some of us say that means that if they don't repent, if they don't say I'm sorry, I don't have to love them. I don't have to be kind to them. I don't have to pray for them. I don't have to do anything, anything of any good to them. I, I, I have the right. That's how we think. I have the right to have no goodwill, no benevolence in my mind towards them. And I know that's not what this verse is teaching. I know that because I can just think about what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. Remember on that Sermon on the Mount? Matthew 5 and verse 43. Remember when Jesus says, you've heard it said that you should love your neighbor and hate who? Your enemy. But Jesus said, no, no, let me help you with that. But I say unto you, you ought to do what to your enemies? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45 says that you may be the sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise, guess what, on the evil and the good. He sends rain on who? We go back to Luke 17, 3 and 4. Sometimes, you know, we, we have this mentality. We, we, we say, well, you didn't repent. You didn't say, I'm sorry. So you, you won and done. And this is for me. You know, sometimes we have the mentality, a person hurt me, a person did something to me. Man, and I'm giving them one time and that's it. They're jettisoned from my life. Some of us, we may give them two times. Maybe three. Three strikes and what do we say? You're out. Fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, forget all that peace. We ready either to fight or we, we, we breaking this off. There is no more you and me. And I'm not saying that's not ever appropriate. But I'm saying, listen to what Jesus is saying here. That this person has wronged me. And he says, they didn't wrong me one time. They wronged me, not twice, three, four, seven times. And I am still in close enough proximity for it to continue to happen. Because how else could they come to me and say, I'm sorry, seven times in a day. I'll say I repent seven times in a day. Not being dogmatic about the application and what that means can and can't be done, but I'm saying from the heart of it, from a principle standpoint, that I'm still, that person still has enough access on some level, enough proximity on some level to still be able to wrong me again and again and again. And me still being ready and present and willing to give them the chance to say, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I made a mistake. And King Jesus says, I must forgive.
I'm saying to you, when we think about all these scriptures, uh, that the Bible certainly advocates a stance that we should all be ready, ready to forgive. Ready, I would say to you that we should all be willing to release the anger and the resentment, to release it, to let it go, independent, independent of that offending person even seeking the forgiveness or expressing their desire to have it. We may get angry. That's not a sin, Ephesians 4, 26. We may certainly need to confront. The Bible teaches that. We read that in Luke 17, 3, Matthew 18, 15. But I want you to understand whenever, when we, the very day we stop forgiving, that is the day we begin to poison a relationship and to poison ourselves. Think about each day as its own unique package. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 and verse number 34, he says, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow uh, will care for itself. Each day it has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6 and verse 34. Uh, when Jesus is teaching his disciples, giving the model prayer, I would suggest to you that is a daily prayer. Because he says in Matthew 6 and verse number 11 that we should say, give us this day or give us day by day our daily bread. And so as we are praying to our Father in heaven each day, as we think about Matthew 6 and verse number 12, we are asking him to forgive us our debts as we are forgiving those who are indebted to us. We're asking him every day, Father, forgive me. And every day he expects us to be willing to forgive those who need our forgiveness. And when we refuse on any given day, when we refuse on any given day to do that, any given day when I refuse to go to God and ask for his forgiveness, on any given day when I refuse to forgive those who are indebted to me, then both guilt from our own sins as well as bitterness against other sins begins to slither in like a snake and inject venom in our lives. In Lamentations chapter 3, verses uh, 22 and 23, I believe it is, the word of God says the steadfast love uh, it never, the steadfast love of the Lord, uh, it never ceases. Uh, his mercies are unending. They are new. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's mercies are new every morning. I would suggest to you and I that so should ours be. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you recognizing your awesomeness, your holiness, your wonderful and perfect essence and character. We're grateful that we are created in your image, and you certainly call us higher by who you are, and how you deal with us, uh, and what you expect from us. Uh, we are mindful, Father, at times we wrestle with bitterness. At times we can be wounded and hurt and pained by the things uh, people may say and do. Uh, and we just pray, Father, that you will help us to think about it, 
feel about it and act about it in a way that will honor and glorify you. We pray, Father, that you help us to always have a heart that's seeking and willing to forgive. We pray, Father, that you will help many of, us, many of us to let go, to release a lot of anger and resentment that's poisoning our hearts. We pray, Father, that you will help us to release it and pray that you will help us to do all that we can all that's in our power, uh, to forgive those who have wronged us and to seek to reconcile with those that we have wronged. We just pray that you help us. It was in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness uh, is something that comes from the heart of a merciful God. He designed it, he extends it, and he commands us to share it with others. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted towards one another, forgiving one another, even as Christ, our God for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So I'm telling you, church, don't look for reasons not to forgive. Don't look for reasons not to forgive. Look for reasons to forgive. If you're here tonight and you haven't put on Christ in the water of grave or baptism, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, we plead with you to do so. Uh, we want you to know that God loves you. Um, and he loves you more than any human ever will. And you'd be wise to always align yourself with him. God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on Calvary's cross so that all of humanity could have the opportunity to be forgiven and to be reconciled to the God of heaven. If you're here tonight and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, he died on Calvary's cross, was, born, was uh, buried and rose again on that third day. If you believe those foundational facts of the gospel, Believe that. You're willing uh, to repent of your sins, Acts 238. Willing to confess the wonderful name of Christ, that he is Lord, and then willing to be immersed in water, baptized uh, for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, man, your past sins can be washed away by the blood of Christ. You can have peace with God. The abundant life yours now and certainly into eternity. We beg you to put on Christ if you have not already. For those of us who are in Christ, What's going on in your heart? I know you're sitting here in this room, and I'm about, I'm, I'm going to shut up. I think about this every day. The older I get, the more I look into God's word, and I understand, man, I can be looking right. I can be smiling on the outside, suited up, booted up, perfume, cologne on in the right place where I'm supposed to be, and my heart a million miles away from where God wants me to be. That's between you and the Lord, but if it is not right, if you know bitterness and things, I'm begging with you, I'm pleading with you to start taking the steps uh, to ease your way back to letting God have his reign in your heart. If we can pray for you, if we can pray with you, assist you in any way, please make it known as we stand and as we sing.
He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. Uh, Brother Curtis come, uh, Vaughn comes forward. Uh, you know, the avenue of prayer uh, and Christ giving us a pathway to go, with, go to him. He's the only one that can do that. Uh, but Curtis is asking for prayers uh, for bitterness that he has had or, or for uh, individuals in his life, the way people have treated him. Uh, so we're going to go to God and prayer on his behalf at this time. Also, our sister uh, uh, Wanda Ross comes with, um, with tears of joy uh, because she had an issue with her, some issues with her family, in particular her sister, that uh, it was a forgiveness issue. And uh, she's so happy or joyful that she was able to work through uh, most of them. But she also just wanted to come ask in prayer that uh, you give her the strength that she would continue uh, on that path and um, with other relationships and all relationships in her life uh, as well. Like you want. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for Curtis and Wanda coming forward. Heavenly Father, we oftentimes carry a burden that we should not carry. We know, Father, that you know all of our lives and what goes on in those lives. We're just so thankful for the avenue of prayer for your dear son, Jesus Christ and for the life that he gave, that we may have this opportunity to come to you with our, with our prayers. We're thankful, Father, for both of these individuals. We ask, Father, that you would be with them, bless them, guide them, and help them along this road. And with Father, we ask that you would be with each and every one of us here and throughout the world, Father, that we may be better disciples of yours, people that will not have to look back and be sorry. We're just so very thankful for all the many blessings in life and for all that you have done and still do in our lives at this time. We ask, Father, that you would be with us, go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's hand it up and we'll have a special prayer. Let us bow. A gracious Father in heaven, hallowed be thy glorious and wonderful name, Father. We're thankful unto thee for another beautiful Lord's day in which you have given us, Father. We're thankful for you being our God, and we're thankful for you being our God. And we're thankful for the good that you do for us, Father, by sending your son Jesus to die for us. We're thankful for this opportunity and this privilege that we've had to assemble here to worship thee, Father. And we're so thankful for your word, the word that was preached here tonight. We're thankful for its convicting power and also, Father, for its saving power. We pray also, Father, that as we go down from this place, that we will all take a heart of forgiveness with us this week, but not only this week, but for the rest of our lives. We pray, Father, that we can make amends with those who wronged us and those who we wronged, Father. Just continue to keep us in your care, keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Continue to keep us in your care with Jesus. Uh, in our hearts, and we pray this in his holy name. Amen. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> it's like, you know when you hear something but it doesn't register? It's all good. It's all good. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. You doing alright? <laughs> 